Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go to the military map and to the hottest spot, the eastern part of Ukraine near to the Bakhmut. Bakhmut so far is the main goal for Russian forces and just recently they took the M03 road near to H32 crossroad over here. So basically they're controlling this very important crossroad near to Bakhmut. It means that probably they're gonna put their main attack from the eastern side directly to the city center and also they're gonna bypass the city from this direction near to Pidhorodne and they're gonna enter the city from Yahudne direction over here and probably gonna go from this direction as well so not a good situation for Bahmut. so far i do not expect that this city will fall in nearby future because compared to lysychansk we concentrated more defense forces for Bahmut, and we were able to build more defense lines but russia still has superiority in their tanks armored vehicles and obviously soldiers but they push on a very secured area so that is why they're losing quite a lot of men for ukraine the main thing right now is to cause the russians as many losses as possible and then we'll have enough weapons go for the counter attack also we have this part change near to Bakhmutske if we go to the timeline it was just uh, recently yesterday and now it is today the main change that russia took knauf german plant uh, was under their control uh, clarification was uh, down near to the bahmut so they took this plant there is the tiny road over here so they may also go uh, to blahodatne and krasnagara after so they have two attack base actually three one two and three in this one so probably they're gonna take bahmut it's my prediction after all after significant fights but probably not this month because as i say to you we have lots of uh, our defense forces in this region and you see by pushing across bahmut scale over here they already crossed the very important supply uh, road that goes from bahmut to lysychansk so this road already been crossed over here by russian forces and this road was used as a defense line so probably russia would go further taking other villages but we also had some of the success recently for ukrainian army as well and if we go from bakhmut eastbound a little bit you'll see the papasta that russia occupied around two months ago and there is the main base for that wagner group and yesterday ukrainian artillery targeted the main building of wagner group command where there were many commanders and together with their soldiers obviously that building was devastated and many russian soldiers lost their lives also there are some rumors that prigozhin the founder of wagner group went to this particular place at that particular time to check out his soldiers he himself is a very close friend of Putin. And we got the information in our public groups that Mr. Prigozhin lost his life in that attack. However, I wouldn't trust that information for now. We need to clarify it and recheck it. Um, later on, obviously, we'll find out what happened to that guy and many of the Wagner soldiers. Moving to the Kherson area. Antonovsky bridge was targeted yesterday once again it is the fourth attack of the Ukrainian army again uh, Russia probably tried to rebuild or fix or repair that bridge it is complete nonsense my friends because each time they will try to make it we're gonna target that bridge again and again we have enough uh, ammunition supply for the Heimer system and obviously russian supplies now being cut all across the Dnieper river on the south part so basically around 25,000 soldiers of the russian army are being trapped in this area and it was some sort of the operation from the ukrainian forces so our president our soldiers our generals were calling for the counter-attack that should happen in nearby future on Kherson and Russia didn't want to lose the Kherson that's why they gather lots of their soldiers and ammunitions in this area and finally we were able just to cut supply lines so they have 25 soldiers with no supplies I don't think they'll start 
their attack to the south again and i still expect the counterattack from ukrainian forces but not this month i think then land list weapons will arrive so in september or maybe even october and again we have the information that russian command is leaving Kherson city itself and all of this area for the other shore of the Dnieper river because they are basically in lack of supplies they have just two ferries across uh, the Kherson uh, that carry ammunition, uh, trikes and vehicles, but they cannot carry tanks. So all of the heavy armored uh, vehicles like tanks um, are trapped here. Also yesterday we attacked Berdansk city, well not the city itself, but Russian military bases. And Russia also used this port city to provide supplies for this region from Crimea. But once their ships were under severe Ukrainian attack, they lost three of the ships one was lost completely and uh, two were severely damaged and they cannot use it uh, those any longer and also we attacked the Militopol area the air base around there it was a big explosion so as you can see we have hammers working all across the front lines and far behind the front lines and as usual every day rush targets Kharkiv uh, Mikolaev and Zaporizhia with their artillery systems and uh, my friends for the rest parts of the front lines the situation is more or less standstill let's go for the latest news and events so yes I told you about the Bahmutsky and Knauf factory that was uh, lost during the fighting and uh, the Russian soldiers got some of the photos there with the confirmation that they really took this place i see more and more videos how we used simple grenades mounted on the drones and dropped on the russian soldiers uh, unfortunately my friends i'll not show you the details of that explosion so uh, this guy was injured so those small grenades they cause mostly not death but uh, injuries but still it slows down russians now they need to take care about that guy about his legs uh, about his evacuation so obviously uh, those drops are making uh, some profits for ukrainian army those types of weapons obviously are much less effective compared to tanks and artillery but they can lower the russian forces morale to the ground because they could be attacked anywhere from the skies yes it is a weapon but the psychological effect of it is much greater than this type of explosion and this guy starts to look at the skies uh, watching the drone probably and yeah i will not show you the result because i just don't want to show that uh, stuff on my channel one more russian attack helicopter k-52 was attacked by the portable man pad and yes it was shut down we don't see the landing of that helicopter it still flies miraculously but at least it lost the one engine and there is the engine fire obviously it should land somewhere from the force landing sometimes they just explode in the sky sometimes they may fly so depends and this is what left from the wagner command center in papasna so totally demolished building and there are some photos of it so the command center was totally destroyed probably hammers was used for that and here are some weapons of the wagner group soldiers and this is the Berdansk port explosion, uh, Russian occupied territory. And we were able to attack it uh, just uh, recently. And we have some exclusive video of the Ukrainian attack on the Tonosky Bridge. The Tonosky Bridge was attacked by the Heimer system again. And there is the fire probably. Russia still left some of the equipment that they used to repair the bridge. And the attack was done by the several rockets as just to remind you those rockets cannot be intercepted by any kind of the system the only system that could potentially intercept it is the iron dome that israel used to protect its territory from the rockets fire from gaza and huge explosions my friends bridge was just devastated and this tower is located in russian territory and this is the job of the ukrainian suicide drone it's just near to the ukrainian border suicide drone just hit the bottom of the tower seems like it's staying right but you see later on <laughs> what happened to that tower it just drops 
So Russia uses those towers for surveillance of Ukrainian territory and obviously Ukraine fights back destroying it. Here we have some of the aviation news also connected to Ukraine. The Scandinavian airline SAS redesigned the interior of one of their Boeing 737-700s to be able to carry Ukrainian soldiers who were wounded during this war so they will conduct the flights from Zheshev near to the border of Ukraine to Oslo and Trondheim and to many of the European cities as well Brussels, Amsterdam and many other hospitals so I think that airplane will be chartered just for that flight I'm really happy that we have this support from our Western allied countries and not only my friends I'll keep you updated on situation here in Ukraine and now if you like what I do just press the like button and also if you want to support me financially there are many links under this video how you can do it on Patreon, PayPal or Donatella whichever you like. For those of you who support me my friends thank you so much and as usual I wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are. Have a great time.